This programme is sponsored by Mouse Mesh, the humane way of keeping mice out of your home. Air brick covers come in three different colours and sizes, shaping the future of pest control. Um, now, we also talked about mind control. It's another major um, thing that he's exposed. As I say, he was exposed in, in 1997 and before 1997. Um, MK Ultra Mind Control and uh, the Cathy O'Brien case. Yes, yes. Do you want to just give us a few words on your understanding of that particular... Yes, I mean, the Cathy O'Brien case is, is you know, there's a lot of information in there. Um, Mark Phillips was allegedly this chap who found out that Cathy O'Brien was a mind-controlled sex slave uh, working with high-powered politicians, and mainly in the US, but not exclusively there. Uh, and he somehow, quote-unquote, rescued her and took her to a, you know, some kind of sanctuary, I think in Alaska, um, and sort of then became her guardian. Uh, and she, uh, Kathy O'Brien, had a child called Kelly, who I think, uh, if we look at current age, this child I think is in her thirties now, uh, who had also been uh, the victim of ritual abuse, as was Kathy. And then they wrote this book called Transformation of America, uh, which I think was first published around the, around ninety seven, I think, or and then I think there was another version was published or a second edition or something in two, year two thousand around then. And uh, there are some very uh, graphic revelations in that book, some of which Davy Dyke has also referred to in his books, um, and some of which he hasn't. And uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely worth uh, reading that to see what you think of, of how far uh, some of these mind control and ritual abuse uh, um, you know, rings go. Hmm. Am I right in thinking that some of these women that were taken as children by the CIA and hypnotized and put through MK Ultra style mind, mind control programming to be used as sex slaves in blackmail traps and other for other uses. Some of them have actually had compensation. I, I wasn't aware of that. I wasn't aware of that. But it, you know, if uh, that's the case, I, 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 I do seem me. to remember seeing a uh, public trial in, in, in the states of, of women who claim to have been abused by the state in that way. Mm, mm, mm. I wasn't, I wasn't aware You're of not that. aware of that? Okay, no. I, I, I no. think that I can check up on that. Okay. Um, and Ike talks about how these women uh, are obtained. They look for people with certain traits and who are from certain backgrounds who will be more suitable for mind control. That's right. I mean, certainly in Cathy O'Brien's case, you know, she does, as part of that book, she gives a sort of auto autobiography and she said that, you know, her father was an abuser, you know, he abused her from a very young age, uh, from when she was a baby, basically. So, you know, her claim is that she was, that's why she was taken into the program, because she was already ritually abused by mm -hmm. her family. And a lot of these uh, people come from families where ritual abuse goes on. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing that he was exposing in 97 was um, mass shooting incidents, which We've seen so many of those recently, mm, yes. and um, he, he was unpicking them and, and, and showing that the official stories are a crock of shit, basically. Mm, mm. Um, now, he, he took questions at the end of this particular lecture, and I've just noted some of them. He was asked about alien life, and we, we are going to come on to this. Um, Someone asked him whether he, he agrees that there's alien life, and he said that he doesn't have a problem that there's ET life somewhere in the universe, which I think, that I would say that's the prevailing view these days. Yes, there's yes. there's got to be life somewhere in the universe. Uh, and I'm paraphrasing from his lecture here. He says that we, uh, we don't know whether man uh, has, he's talking about UFO sightings here. We don't know whether man has state-of-the-art technology that can do mutilations. So he's questioning whether animal mutilation is a man-made or an ET phenomenon. That's a fair enough point. Um, he says, I believe myself that the missing link, this is the link between um, the Homo sapiens and other hominid species where there appears to be this gap in the evolutionary path. Uh, he says that the missing link uh, I believe myself that the missing link was extraterrestrial intervention, and this has been put forward by people like Sitchin and Lloyd Pye. Uh, the UFO subject is being manipulated, and he asks the question, who benefits from it? Um, he's asked, um, who is the real power at the top of the pyramid? And he's, he talks about bloodlines back to Babylon and speculatively to Atlantis. 
um, and he's asked whether aliens are in charge. And this is 1997, and this is what he says. He says, it could well be that at the end of this bloodline, at the beginning, um, may quite well have been. I don't know. It's possible that an extraterrestrial civilization of some kind would have since helped to manipulate these bloodlines in their position of power and take over. It's all speculation, but it's all going to come out in the next few years, I think. No mention of reptilians there. Yeah. Right? He's alluding to the work of Sitchin. Okay. Yes. Possibly the Anunnaki. Because, I mean, Sitchin's books have been around for about 20 years by then because Sitchin was writing in the 70s, wasn't yes. he? So. Um, and then he says, at the top uh, there, I think, are people interacting with either extraterrestrials or certainly a malevolent consciousness. All right. So he's saying that the people who, at the very top, uh, there, there's some sort of interaction with a malevolent consciousness or possibly extraterrestrials. They are knowingly interacting with this consciousness in satanic rituals. All right. So again, no mention of reptilians there. Um, he, he goes on to talk about the 13 bloodline families. Bloodlines came out of Babylon or Egypt or whatever uh, was before and eventually make, up, make their way up to Europe. So he's talking about this, these bloodlines coming into the modern day uh, and then being involved in the power structures uh, today. Now, um, when, I, when we decided to make this program, uh, w what kind of sparked it off was uh, David Icke appeared on a mainstream TV program, the uh, Andrew Neil Show, they call it the, the, the political late night discussion program called um, This Week. And I texted Andrew, I said, oh, I, 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 uh, he's, you know, watch this, he's, it's coming on TV. I, it surprised me that he was going to be on that program, to be honest. Mm. I thought he was banned from mainstream TV. So we both watched it and, um, uh, well, we, we'll take a look at it now, Andrew. Let's just have a look at this clip. The same people that uh, told us there were weapons of mass destruction in Iraq when they knew they weren't, those very same people gave us the official story of 9-11. And what the mainstream media so was, is was doing... was 9-11 a conspiracy? Of course it was. Who when was you, when, behind it? Well, what was behind it was... No, who was behind it? Well, again, in the time we've got here, it's very difficult. But there is a network that works through um, government agencies, through uh, organizations like the CIA, etc., to push an agenda on the world which is unfolding by the day. My books in the 1990s laid out what this agenda was, and those books are now being read on the television news in changes in, in, in society and laws coming in. OK. And, and, and the thing is, this is the point, the mainstream media has accepted that those characters, those same characters, lied about Iraq, but will not question in any way the same people's version of 9-11. They're journalists. It's their job. But do you still think the royal family were shape-shifting lizards? Yes, I do. You do? Yes. And you also want us to believe 9-11 is a conspiracy? Uh, yes, but the doesn't point that, that rather undermine. I mean, well, no, I doesn't. can see the point that you might have some uh, question nine eleven. But if you also think that Buckingham Palace is inhabited by lizards, it kind uh, of undermines. But it's not it. that. It's not that simple. It's a whole big backstory before you you get to to um, uh, what what I'm saying. All right. So as we can see there, Andrew, um, he gets in his point about nine eleven, but he's 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 what's the word I'm looking for? is dealt with by this mark about, do you think the Queen is a reptile? Um, yes, do he does, it? yeah, and he says, yeah, I do. He says he still thinks that she is, you know. Or, or can, can turn into one. Yeah, yes. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, but then, you know, the, he, he, the thing that struck me about that clip as well, a couple of things, was that he, he was allowed to mention his world tour you know, when Andrew Neil just casually says, oh, so what are you doing these days? And, and David Icke says, well, I'm going on a world tour. Mm -hmm. You know, so can we count that as free publicity from the BBC? You know? All right. Um, now then, but as I, as I mentioned, probably the most uh, controversial point about David mm -hmm. Icke is, is the, the, the mention of reptilians, reptilian hybrids, hybrids and reptiles. And we're going to um, look into that in some detail now. Um, now let's just, so 1997, as far as we are aware, 
but there's no mention it in any of his books or his videos. So I'm going to just talk briefly about a 1998 video called The Freedom Road. You can watch it online. Um, and some of the things that he talks about, some of the same things, fear and herd mm -hmm. mentality, um, pyramid of power. Um, he talks about meeting a man from the CIA who works as a scientist. So he claims to have made contact with someone from the CIA, which I think is significant. And he says that this person from the CIA has a patch on his chest that has to be filled with this golden liquid every 72 hours to keep him alive. So he's had information from this person from the CIA who's told him about certain hidden technology that this, uh, he talks about ca there being cures for cancer, free energy, he talks about megaliths and how the megaliths in the ancient world couldn't possibly have been built by human beings, that, this kind of thing. Um, knowledge and power in the ancient world and how that's secretly been passed to the elite of the modern world. Um, talks about extraterrestrial life, ancient texts all over the world, speak of extraterrestrials, talks uh, about, I'm summarizing th th this yes. video here, th this isn't verbatim. He talks about Sumerian tablets and Zachariah Sitchin. He talks about the Anunnaki, uh, those who came from the high place down to the earth. Anunnaki bred with humans to make a hybrid race. So this links into the, the missing link that people like Lloyd Pye and Sitchin have spoken about. The gods, extraterrestrials in the ancient world, Hindu Veda, he talks about uh, the gods in flying machines. So um, I'm just going to quote, this is a quote from this video, and this is when the reptilian uh, claim starts to come into Ike's work. He says, along with this white Martian race, there is what UFO researchers have called a reptilian race. And it's this reptilian race that also interbred with humanity. And I think the reptilian race were the Anunnaki. So he's saying that the reptilian race, were, and now my understanding of Sitchin and say Lloyd Pye, I mean certainly Lloyd Pye who I've interviewed, he did not think that the Anunnaki were reptilian. That's, that's my understanding too, yeah, and that they were actually more similar to Homo sapiens than any type of reptilian race because they used a lot of their DNA to make us according to yeah, you know, th those th accounts. Th th that's my understanding of what is alleged to be the Anunnaki, that they, yes, were, me too. they, were, they were us with a whole lot more powers. Yeah. And we are an inferior version of them. Correct. Um, that's my understanding of the Anunnaki. Um, uh, when the first interbreeding took place, the hybrids were half human, half Anunnaki, I think reptilian, and they interbred with this Martian race this white race that became the race that took over the world in effect. When a second interbreeding took place, it wasn't between the Anunnaki reptilian and the humans, it was between the Anunnaki and the hybrid bloodstreams, 75% Anunnaki reptilian, 25% human. And he talks about uh, tracing the pure bloodlines into the modern world. So he's saying that the, the global elite of today, people like the Queen and Bush and Blair and all these others, have got bloodlines linking back to this hybrid reptilian race and that the, and that these people can shape shift they can turn into a uh, reptile shape um, now we're going to discuss well you've you've recently just finished reading um, David Icke's 1999 book where this is all brought in called the, the biggest secret correct yeah yeah so just you, you've just finished reading it, haven't you? Mm, fairly uh, recently, yeah. yeah so yeah, just, yeah. do you want to just expand on what I've just said with regards to what you've read in that book? Yeah, well, I mean, in summary, it's a very good book. It's a very interesting book. And, there are, you know, it's well written. It's easy, easy to understand. And as I was saying to you earlier on today, uh, you know, there's, there's uh, quite a bit, for example, on the Diana assassination. And there were quite a few bits of that, you know, which I didn't know. And... Um, yeah, there's probably several other sections which, uh, you know, like that, which where there were bits and pieces I didn't know and have presented quite well. Um, but, you know, this the, again, he keeps going on about reptilians and I think reptilarians, which uh, seem to be slightly different. And he talks about them having their own uh, bloodline and uh, the, the I think he, he mentions about having um, their own kind of religion almost. Um, so, so, and you wonder where this has come from, and, it, and it's, this book is peppered with references to um, 
person called Arizona Wilder, which I think we're going to going to talk a little bit about mm -hmm. in a few minutes. Um, and um, she appears to be the main source of a lot of this reptilian information. Um, and he does he does sort of make points about some of the reptilian symbolism that's in various cultures, which is quite interesting. But uh, it, it's it's kind of you know it's kind of odd how this is put into the book. It's almost like it's woven into the book after the main body of the book was written. You know, like it looks like the book was mainly written, and then he put this reptilian stuff. He interwove it with with the sort of the script that he already had, the script, you know, the, the uh, manuscript he already had. So, uh, and I c came across an article by one of the guys, I think one of the researchers who worked on that book with David Icke, Ivan T. Fraser was his name. Yes. And he he had, you know, he's got a page on, I think it's on truthseeker.co.uk. Yeah, I think this is, people should read this. Yes, definitely. Right. Ivan Fraser was uh, supposed to be proofreading or checking the book for spellings and this kind of thing. And as far as I'm aware, there was a fallout over what was going to be put in the book. So Yeah, that, that's basically the scenario. And Ivan T. Fraser says, well, you know, he's not trying to be, um, he's not trying to really get at Ike or judge him too much. He just wanted to set the record straight that he basically advised David Ike that he thought that this uh, Arizona Wilder stuff was not, you know, he shouldn't have, he, that wasn't really worthwhile putting that in the book because in his judgment it was fairly flimsy. Her story was fairly flimsy. And uh, there was just, this yeah, just to expand on that then, Arizona Wilder is another alleged uh, female monarch victim, sex slave, uh, yes. mind control victim, yes. who Ivan Fraser thinks was a setup. It yes. was a, a fake uh, mind control victim sent to fool David Icke into speaking about a whole lot of other things and get that into his work. That, that, this is what Ivan Fraser was saying. Yes. And you can yes. read, if well, we can put a link on the screen to this quite long article where he explains his concerns over the biggest secret. And, yes. And also information about Credo Mutwa, who we're going to talk about in a moment. So Arizona Wilder and Credo Mutwa are two of... The influences all, um, that David Icke um, has found out about r reptilian theories. Um, yes, I mean, indeed. I read, he says, having discussed my concerns with David's wife and having sent David e emails outlining my concerns over errors in his book uh, and a feeling I have that he has been set up with misinformation and been the target of psychic manipulation over a period from before publication to very recently, September 1999, and as yet having absolutely no feedback from David about any of the major concerns, I decided to publish my findings on the David Icke uh, forum, and then he, got, he gets banned from yep. the forum. Um, so if you want to watch the, in, the interview that David Icke does with Arizona Wilder, I'm sure you can find that on the internet. Yes, just, it's on YouTube, yeah. Just Google Arizona Wilder, interview David Icke, and see what you think. See if you think she's genuine. One of the things that struck me as peculiar in The Biggest, biggest Secret is he continually refers to her, but he calls her a mother goddess, I think is the term that he uses in the book. And that just struck me as odd. As th that I think he's, you know, he's putting this in the reference of her being a, uh, a you know, mind control s a sex slave. Or, or you know, whatever phrase you care to use, but he refers to her as a mother goddess, mm. and that she'd witnessed. And I think the key thing is that Arizona Wilder cl claims to have witnessed these uh, these ceremonies, which involved uh, members of the royal family, in, yeah. in, in, uh, and, and where they turned into reptilians in, during these. I think it was these. Uh, I, yeah. I, uh, if I remember rightly, Richard, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's where they're drinking blood. Isn't mm -hmm. it? They're alleged to be bl drinking blood. Yeah, and she also targeted Zachariah Sitchin and is it Lawrence Gardner? Lawrence Gardner, yeah. And, and said that they take part in blood rituals with the royals uh, where shape shifting happens. Ivan Fraser then goes on to say that, uh, that considering Gardner's books are revealing profound insights into the ancient knowledge, I'm not surprised they wanted him demonized. Uh, so Ivan Fraser talks about um, a guy called uh, Brian Desborough 
who he says introduced Arizona Wilder to David. So he's highly suspicious about this Brian Desborough guy. So Ivan Fraser is suggesting that the Desborough is some sort of government agent that's trying to feed Ike various pieces of disinformation. That's, right. that's what he's saying in this in, right. in, in this text. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now the other person will people can watch the Arizona Wilder interview and they can decide for themselves whether it's disinformation and whether David Icke should have included it in in his book The Biggest Secret. And there is another f uh, sort of factor as well that you can find out in that she Arizona Wilder was turned out not to be her real name, and I think after that interview, I don't know if it was quite soon after or a few years after, but she later kind of tried to distance herself from the remarks that she made in that interview, which again, you know, leads you to wonder why, you know, why she would do mm. that. Why would, why would she after that time say that she, you know, uh, what she said then wasn't totally legit, right. you know. He says here, I thought, this is just too ridiculous for words. David, how the hell are you allowing this nonsense to influence you? This is Ivan Fraser saying this right, uh, about, in, yes. in, about, yeah. about the biggest secret, yes. in Arizona, Arizona Wilder. All right, now the other person who's mentioned in the book is uh, Credo Mutua, mm. is that right? Yes. Because uh, round about this time, David Icke went to South Africa and he spent some time making a couple of videos with Credo Mutua. Do you just want to tell us a bit about Credo Mutua, Andrew? Yeah, well, I, I understand he's a South African. Uh, he was a member of one of the tribes uh, there. Um, and uh, he talks about... Um, the, the tribal, you know, knowledge of the reptilian race. Uh, and, and I did watch the five hours of interviews that David Icke uh, did with Credo Mutwa years and years ago. I probably watched it about well, at least eight or nine years ago, maybe longer. And, you know, it's a very interesting account. And Credo Mutwa, you know, he's got this sort of quite engaging uh, sort of accent. Uh, and, uh, you right. know, he... Yeah, yeah. I, I, I would call it, the way that he talks, I find it uh, hypnotic. Um, yes. He's got this very slow, precise way of talking, and it, it, almost, it draws you in. It does. Um, now, just one or two things to point out about Credo Mutwa. He, as you said, he's a Zulu shaman, so he's, he's got all this knowledge of ancient uh, African history and legends uh, of certain alien races that may have come to the earth in the dim and distant past and perhaps bred with humanity and all this kind of thing. Um, now, David Icke's not the first Westerner to go and interview Credo Mutwa. I think this point here is, is worth pointing out. Um, the researcher John Mack, who did a lot of research into the alien abduction phenomenon, yes. went to meet him in, I think it was 1994, four years earlier. Um, Bill Chalker, the Australian research, UFO researcher, has also interviewed him, and also Zachariah Sitchin has interviewed him. Now, what I found interesting about the John Mack story, about how John Mack met Credo Mutua, John Mack, this is, so this is four years before David Icke's getting yep. into the reptilian stuff, John Mack goes to South Africa, and he's asked to be interviewed on a South African television program called Agenda. Now that program is, it was a mainstream program. It was by uh, the South Africa Broadcast Channel, state owned, right? So it's, okay. obvi it's obviously discussing certain UFOs and that kind of thing. So they invite John Mack onto the show and they also invite Credo Mutwa via video link from Zimbabwe. So John Mack didn't even know he was gonna be on the, the TV with Credo Mutwa. So the, he's presented with this, this uh, South African, sorry, not South, Zimbabwean uh, Zulu, uh, shaman, and, and they were on this TV program together, and Credo Mutwa asks to meet John Mack. So John Mack didn't go to South Africa to meet Credo Mutwa. He was diverted in his trip to go and meet him. And a lot of what Credo Mutwa um, told John Mack was then incorporated into his, ne into his book, Passport to the Cosmos. Now, in Credo Mutwa's information, broadly, he speaks about two different races. One is the reptilian race, the uh, Chitahuri, and then there's another race of smaller beings, w which uh, John Mack su suggests are the grey aliens mm -hmm. that we hear about in, in, abdu in abduction stories, and he calls these the, um, the Mandindas. Uh, now, I'm going to read 
the, the videos are available to watch online. You can sit for five hours and watch David Icke interviewing Credo Mutua, and they are interesting to watch, and I'm sure there's some valuable information in that. Now, one thing that I would, an observation I would make of those interviews, they weren't, they weren't uh, um, critical interviews. D David Icke was asking some very closed questions in those interviews, and in fact, that's actually pointed out by um, Ivan Fraser. Ivan Fraser. Right. Uh, there's a lot of information which we haven't got time to go into, um, um, but Credo Mutwa is saying that the the, um, the cheetah huri, which were these reptilians in African folklore, that uh, came in these craft to the earth. But he says they were originally from the earth and they were returning. And he does talk about them interbreeding. Um, now. But some of the questions are leading, in my opinion. H here's a few examples. Um, so David Icke explains to Credo Mutwa uh, that Kathy O'Brien saw George Bush shapeshift into a reptile. He then says, and so many other people have told me the story of world leaders today changing into reptiles in front of their eyes and then changing back again. Uh, Ike goes on to say, Miguel de la Madrid, the president of Mexico at the time of George Bush, said to Kathy O'Brien, she quotes in her book, that a reptilian extraterrestrial race interbred with the ancient Central American people uh, because they needed to create bloodlines through which they could operate. And Mutwa then just says, yes. Ike goes on, and he said that these bloodlines were in effect today's world leaders. Does it fit with your knowledge, Credo, that the royal lines of the Chittahuri reptilian human interbreeding become the demigods of the royal families, etc. But they have gone on in Africa as well as the rest of the world to become the ruling lines and the ruling people of these countries. Mudwa then says, yes, many of them have. At one point, Ike states, I must say, the way that the evidence that I am uncovering is going, and it's going there very fast, and it syncs so much with what you're saying, is that a race from the stars, a reptilian race, interbred with humanity, they created crossbreed bloodlines which became the middlemen, the demigods, the royal kings and lines, ruling power in the ancient world, and through interbreeding have become the presidents, the ruling people at the top of the power structures of banking, politics, of the military. Um, all areas of our lives, that of business, all of it. Is that the way you have seen it yourself? Mutwa replies, Yes, sir. So th there are many other similar uh, quotes like this where um, Ike is asserting that, that the reptilians in South African legends mm. uh, are the Anunnaki that, that Sitchin talks about. There's, another, th th there's, a, there's one more quote that I picked up that I want to read which wasn't um, expanded on. I th this is what Credo says in, in part of his intro. He says, the group of American people who came to visit me a week or so ago and who left a rather unveiled threat about me shutting up or else my wife will die, who warned me about a certain creature called Adeazar, that this creature is watching me. These people said this, that on Lake Titicaca there is a hidden beam of light coming from the sky onto the surface of South African Lake uh, uh, that on the 9th of September 1999, something very interesting is going to happen at Titicaca. Now that's interesting, 9th of September 99 is two days and two years before 9-11. And he's talking about some beam coming down from the sky on the Lake Titicaca. This is Frido Mutwa. Yeah. And, and it's these Americans who've told him this, mm. who, who are also threatening him. How interesting. Um, now, I'm interested to know what this is, he, said, he goes on to say. Now, Ike then doesn't question him about American people. Who were these American people telling you to keep quiet? So I asked the question, when w was John Max meeting with Credo Mutwa arranged by someone else in a fairly powerful position who had uh, control over the TV company? Were they put together for certain reason? That's what I ask. And I don't know the reason why David Icke's gone to meet him. I don't know whether he's read about it in John Mack's work or even Sitchin's work, perhaps. Mm. I don't know. I don't know. Um, now, th th 
Credo Mutt was certainly had s extreme trauma in his life. He was attacked uh, by knife and almost died. And this, uh, the, the, um, Ivan Fraser actually suggests that he could be a victim of mind control himself because he talks about waking up on a table. The, the usual abduction uh, right. scenario, right? So Credo Mutt is an alien abductee is by his own Admission. testimony, mm. right? Which th there may be real ab alien abductees. I, I don't refute that. Uh, but Ivan Fraser is, is, is saying, well, has there been some mind control with Credo Mutwa? Mm -hmm. um, that's what he's suggesting in that, in that passage. Mm -hmm. So now there's a chap, I discussed David Icke with somebody else, uh, and I don't know if this is true, who said to me uh, in relation to the reptilian uh, issue, because I actually states in, in the Credo Mutwa tapes, that many, many people have come up to him and told him the same story yes. of people changing into yes. reptiles. Now, chap that I know, he, says, he, he said to me, he said, well, the CIA were sending actors to David Icke's talks throughout America and Canada, or where, wherever he was in 1998, giving him these stories. Uh, so uh, is it possible that there was some sort of CIA operation which involved um, Arizona Wilder, Credo Mutwa, uh, and various other actors going to his lectures to convince him of this reptilian story. Because in 1997, you look at his work, and it's, it's bang on. Right. But this program is sponsored by Mouse Mesh. If you're in the construction industry, we've introduced Mouse Mesh, inbuilt with interchangeable fronts, six different colors, and stainless steel.